Hey Hebrew fans, this is Todd. So I'm going to cover a little bit about some scanners. So the first scanner I'm going to cover is this uh, Revo Point scanner. And this scanner has got some really cool features. One, you can actually hook it to a cell phone, which I think is kind of cool and amazing. And you can see on the cell phone there, you can see the blue right here represents the um, part that's being rendered in 3D. This white right here represents what's seen on the camera right there. And then of course you have a gray down here for your objects of what it looks like in the, um, in the actual 3D sensor. So in the sensors here, you can see we have different sensors right in the front, and that's how this thing works. So that's pretty cool. It does not use the iPhone camera at all. It just uses, I don't think it uses the iPhone camera. Nope, it doesn't. It just uses the stuff built into the 3D thing right there. Now, in order to make this portable, I went and got a um, portable power supply, and I plugged it right into that. And it's kind of a strange setup. You have to actually um, um, set it up so that your network sharing basically is a hotspot and you have to program in your hotspot password and ID into the um, Revel point. And it, then it actually logs into your hotspot as if it's using your hotspot like a separate computer or something. So let's go ahead and break down how this thing works. I'm gonna use the phone first to show you. You can also hook it up to a computer too. So right now it says right here it's excellent. If I get too close, it says uh, too near. And then if I get uh, too far away, it will eventually tell me it's too far. Uh, well, it's probably picking up something else here on here besides just that. Anyway, you guys get the idea. So this is picking up other things. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back to get it where it says excelente. All right, so now that I have it set so it says excellent, I am now going to turn on this giant spinner that it comes with, and you can see it right there. It comes with this really cool spinner. Now, because I put the phone on here, it has a little extra extension to hold the phone in place. It raises your um, tripod about this much. So, if you use the pop scanner box, because that's what they refer to as a pop scanner, on the bottom below your tripod, it puts it back at the right height. So, what's cool about this is and one feature I do like about it is you can actually use this to scan people. So right before you start your scan, you choose how you want it. And then uh, once you have all your settings, see right here you got your settings you can choose on here. I'll just set this to auto instead of manual. And we'll set this one right here also to audio or auto. There we go. And now um, here, let's see if I can do this right. Uh, Maybe it's when you push play. Let's go and give it a shot. All right, so there it's collecting it. Let's go ahead and push the turn on button here for the switch. And you can see this is rotating around. It's actually creating the 3D object right on the screen in front of us. How cool is that? Gives us a frame count of what it's doing. Now the, the phone, it works really fast. It actually works faster than it does on the computer. Now it's missing the bottom down there, so I'm going to scoot this out just a little bit so I can catch that bottom. I'm going to set it go around one more time to make sure we get it all nice and clean. Now sometimes you may let it go around twice. Sometimes you end up messing up your resolution, but we'll check this out and see if it works. So here it comes on the back side there. Did we catch it this time? Looks like we got it. So now let's go ahead and push the stop button. Burp. And we'll hit complete. And when you hit complete, it then uh, combines the frame count. So you can go and turn off the switch right here. So hopefully it's combining the frames now. Oh, and it did. Okay, cool. Well, that was really fast. On the computer, like I said, it's a little slower. So now you notice I missed the top of the head, which kind of stinks a little bit. But you can go ahead and close the holes on here. And it's doing the fusion. And there is my... 3D capture of this uh, sculpture, this head. And it comes with the head too, so you can use that for your results. All right, so what I did find was it does work very fast with the phone, and that's really cool. 
and it's a great thing that it works that way let me go and get out of here let me back up here we go so in here you can choose your settings and you can choose whether you're doing a feature um, markers the little stickers they come with someone's face their body or if it's in dark mode so you can choose that ahead of time to get it all set up you can choose how you export it PLA object or STL I want to use STL because that's what I want to be able to, to do things with my other programs so there we go and so you can use that then by changing changing it to body and then scanning a whole entire person so let's go ahead and uh go to the computer now just happen to have a computer sitting right here right here and uh, let me go ahead and point the phone away for a minute while i do my login all right and i already have the application running Whew, those bright lights are killing me there we go so now i'm going to unplug it from my power adapter and I'm going to plug it into the computer instead. Ta -da. And when it first starts up, you'll see the lights change. It goes from blue to green. That means it's accessing what it's supposed to do its thing. Once it turns green, it means it's all set up and ready to go. Bink. And you can see it's already going to town on this. It's already figuring out all the different angles and stuff. So let's Go ahead and get out of the app on the phone and close it completely. And now let's uh, adjust this so that we got the right stuff. And just like before, I am going to take my mouse over and choose auto on these. Auto. Auto. And it tells me I hear it's good but not excellent. So I'm going to slide it forward just a little bit. And you can see I'm kind of sliding this thing forward just like I did before to get it just right so that we get excellent there we go there's our excellent and now I'm going to aim this down just a little bit to get the head more centered in that spot and there we go now this one's a little bit different when you start it you come up here to the top and you click a little plus to make a new thing you choose feature like I did before you hit confirm and now you're going to hit the play button to start it and that's that play button right over here in the corner. And when I hit play, it is going to start capturing it just like it did on the phone. So let me go ahead and scoot this computer over a little bit so you guys can kind of see them both. There we go. And now that I'm pushing play, oh, we're cutting the top of his head off. I'm gonna pull back a little bit. And you can see the blue on there, the top of his head was cut off. So there we go. The noise is good. At least now I have the top of his head on there too. There we go. And now let's go ahead and push play. I'm going to start the spinning first. There we go. And bingo. Now it's recording all of the motion as it goes around. You can see what it's doing there. And there's like the different layers it collects. And there's, you can just see how it's all collecting it. And once it's done going around fully, I'm going to go ahead and push the stop on this. All right. Oh, oh. Stop. And we're going to hit complete. And now it's fusing the point clouds. And now I'm going to click that little grid over here on the side that little grid and this one actually uh, fills in all the holes we'll say yes and watch this smash there it is and now you can see it all in 3d and there is the head so let me show you what we're looking at here I'm gonna go ahead and open up blender blender and uh, let's look at these two files individually so here is blender now, for those that know me, you know Blender's one of my favorite tools. I use it all the time. And let's just go ahead and delete that. And file, open, don't save. And I think on my desktop, I have my scan test. There it is. 
and here is my 3D scanner. Unfortunately, it actually, oh, phone versus computer. There we go, that's the one I want. And here are the two heads that were scanned in. Now, the one in yellow is the head done at the phone, and the one in red is the one done on the computer. What I want you to notice is the granular difference between these. The more spaces in between means it's not as detailed as the red. So check us out when I go ahead and put the fill in. And you can see this one right here has all kinds of jaggies where the one done on the computer with the exact same scanner is much clearer. So if you're going to scan someone's whole entire body, of course it's going to look a lot clearer than this because it's a much bigger object. So for that you want to use the phone, but if you're going to scan something small, you're going to want to use the computer. So this got me thinking, man, if I have to use the computer every single time, that is going to be a pain in the rear. So I thought, what if I used an iPad? Right, get my iPad out here. Let me go ahead and turn this on. And I was all excited about trying to use my iPad to do this. And uh, let me do my password really quick. And so I loaded iHandy on here. I, I just could not get the iHandy to install correctly to work. And it was probably because this does not have a phone connected to it, so I couldn't do the hotspot. I thought, you know what? I have a program called Duet. Duet. And Duet allows you to do a screen share with your computer. So I'm going to choose Air. And I'm going to use Mirror from Windows Desktop. Hey, there we go. And there it is. And you can see now that I... Come on. There it is. I now have a mirror image of what's going on here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, go to my settings, my desktop. I can now push my play button right here and I can create stuff right here on my desktop as a mouse setting. So I can now control all the controls right here. Now the bad part is now I have to try to look at this and look at that and make it work. So what I've done is I've actually printed this right here and this slides onto my iPad just like that. And once that slides onto my iPad, this, actually let me go ahead and pull this apart really quick, show you guys how this. So let's go ahead and pull this apart and take out the centerpiece. Screw this back together. And now the way I designed this was this just slides in right like that. There we go. And now I have my 3D scanner and my iPad all in one. And now I can actually, let me go and start a new one. Confirm. All right, and now I can hold this and I can scan things in using my iPad just like that and scan things right in and hold it and scan a person very easily. Then use my thumb to control the controls right here to stop and play and everything else. So you can do it even one-handed if you had to. So you can you know, grab something or do you need to do and then go back to doing this. So if you want, I have this STL file actually on the link in the description if you want to download it for yourself. It works with the iPad Air and then of course this really cool RevPoint scanner and it turns it into that and then you use Duet to connect it to your computer and now you got a high resolution version scanning this in and uh, then you can also get the top of the head easily and bring it down and get the bottom and get all the pieces you need to get a really good scan of what it is you're doing. All right, so that's my review of this. Um, later on, I'll do a comparison video of this scanner versus other scanners I have, so you guys can see the difference. This, this video is just all about this one scanner and some ways I found to make it work better. This cool little thing I developed works really good for keeping it on your iPad and keeping it all in one place. When you print this, it comes in two pieces, and basically you just take a bunch of super glue and stick it on whatever the height you want, and there you go. Bada bing, bada boom, and you got yourself a handy dandy scanner. I got myself a USB extension cord too. I haven't tried it out yet, so I can actually do this from the other room remotely and have my computer just sitting on my desk. All right, 
Well, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. Tell me what you think about this scanner, if you happen to have one, or if not, if you're thinking about getting it, if this is a good review for you or not. Um, like I said, the cool part is you can use an Apple device or Samsung or something else to use for your phone, or even better yet, like I, I use my Duet, and then I can scan in stuff really easily that way. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, and I will see you guys next video.